And this is Michael Jansen from tinyhousedesign.com. Uh, this is a video tutorial series on how to draw a tiny house on a trailer with uh, Google SketchUp. Google SketchUp is the free uh, 3D software, drawing software from Google. And um, a tiny house on a trailer, if you're not familiar, is um, not exactly a travel trailer. It's, uh, it's really a, a tiny house, uh, fully featured, bathroom, kitchen, sleeping space, etc. That is travel trailer size. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to just start diving in, um, speed up the film so you can watch how quickly uh, SketchUp can, can work, and then I'll slow down and explain how I'm using these tools. So I'll go ahead and explain what I'm doing as the uh, fast forward flies through this SketchUp model. Uh, here I'm just drawing two by fours and uh, laying out floor joists evenly. I copied the front section uh, that I had just drawn and uh, modified it to fit the back. And I'm copying a couple two by fours to uh, fill in the center section. It's a sheet of plywood, copying and pasting a bunch of sheets of plywood notching them to fit around the fenders. Okay, now I'm starting to draw the walls. Throwing a window in that wall. Copied, pasted the wall. Did it again for the side, modifying the wall on the side there for the right length. I'm going to add a couple windows and evenly space my studs. Copied and pasted the wall, save time. Not in the, cut in the door. I'm notching the sides because I forgot to put in the little header over the fenders. Adjusting those studs. Copied and pasted the wall again. I'm, in this uh, part here I'm fixing something that I messed up. I didn't have enough space between the uh, fender and the, and the house. So I think I'll stop there and explain what I just did uh, and which tools I'm using. Uh, so you, you probably noticed that I'm mostly using the pencil tool to draw lines uh, for all of the framing uh, lumber shapes uh, I'm using the push-pull tool to change the length of these um, framing members, 2x4s and whatnot. Um, I'm also using the uh, move tool a lot. Uh, moves uh, objects uh, to and fro. Uh, and I'm using the rotate tool to rotate things around. Uh, primarily, these are the most these are the most common tools uh, that you'll use, and so as you start to use or learn to use Google SketchUp, uh, you'll you'll get very familiar with these. Um, so just to just to kind of recap, um, I'm using the pencil tool to um, simply draw things like uh, the profile of a two by four, and then the push pull tool to make it longer. So for instance, you click on one spot with a pencil tool, line it up with one of the axes, and you can see how the line changes color, red, blue, green. And uh, I'm going to actually type in 1.5 inches, or quote, for inches, and then 3.5 inches. And then if I zoom in on this little guy, you'll be able to see that if I hover over a point, and then bring the pencil back, it'll, it'll remember where it's supposed to be um, lining up to. And it'll give me this very faint red line you probably can see in the video. I hope you can. Um, anyway, that allows me to draw a perfect rectangle. Uh, I'm also grouping things and making components out of things. So if I select all on the object, I can then, and what I'm doing is control clicking to get that menu on a Mac or you could right click on a PC to get this little contextual menu. Uh, so once I have everything selected, well, another way to do it is just to highlight everything. 
with uh, by click, hold, drag your mouse. I'm going to click and hold, or click, uh, control click, and say make group. I prefer using groups over components most of the time. I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, this is the push pull tool. So once you have a shape, you can push it in whatever direction. So there's the beginning of the 2x4. The move tool allows you to move it from place to place. So if I wanted to, let's say I'm going to copy and paste this thing, make a carbon copy of it. These two, because they're just grouped, they're, they're different objects. They're not the same, they're not two instances of the same object. So if I change this one, it doesn't change. Um, if I <clears throat> now turn this one into a component, and now this is a component, it looks the same. But now if I change this one, these are actually now two instances of the same component. Now if I say edit component, and I edit this item, both change. I'll explain why that's really important in, in a moment. Like I said, uh, the move tool, going back to the move tool, um, you click on a point, you move it somewhere, and you click again, and that moves it. So, but the object needs to be selected, usually. <laughs> uh, you can't actually not have anything selected and just hover over, it'll, it'll find the thing that you're trying to do. It doesn't have to be on a point, it can be anywhere. Uh, it's better if it's on a point at a corner or something, because then you can line two corners up. And then the rotate tool will flip around its different axes like this. And once you find the axis you want, if you hold down the shift key, um, it won't change the axis. And it works similarly to the move tool. In this case, um, what I'm going to do actually is let me first select one of these objects. Grab my rotating tool. I'm going to hold down the shift key so my axis plane doesn't change. I'm going to click on the point where I want it to pivot from. So this is the axis pivot point. And I'm going to go somewhere else. And I've let, I'm, I clicked once, and I'm just moving my mouse around. And I'm going to click on another point, and this will be the point that will move around that axis. Now, because you can do this in any number of degrees, if you now type in 90, no, no nothing else, no other character, just 90, and hit enter, it'll snap to 90 degrees. So now I have I have that, uh, those, those pieces. With these very few skills that I've shown you with these three little 2 by 4s um, you can actually draw your whole house, your whole tiny house, uh, which I'll continue to do uh, and explain uh, different uh, things as I go. Uh, now let me, but before I continue, let me recap um, why components and groups are important and different. Um, so let's just tip these up just for fun. So a, f a stud, which is of course the vertical member in a wall, and a plate, or bottom plate, top plate, which is the flat part, I don't like to make components out of my top and bottom plates because they don't really need a whole lot of, you know, they don't, they don't need, they're unique. Hmm, that's a good way to put it. They're unique, relatively speaking. I mean, maybe the other plate on the other side of the house is the same. Maybe it isn't. But, I, you know, most of the time, it's not necessarily going to be. The studs, on the other hand, they're all the same height because the wall is... The wall is usually all the same height. So studs I like to make components so that I just have to edit one and I can raise and lower it and change the height of it. Um, if I'm, let's say I'm making a wall and I'm just copying and pasting studs happily and, and one of them I want to make short, um, but I already know it's a component, I, I can do one of two things. I can explode it which just means 
make it nothing anymore. It's just lines and, and, and flat areas. And now make it a group. So I'm going to control click, select all, all connected, and I'm going to make it a group. That's one way to do it. I'm going to undo, undo. Another way to do it is to make it unique, make it a unique component. So now if I raise and lower my studs, that one doesn't change because it's a unique component. Now this will be useful under like a window because now if I have a, uh, a stud under a window, um, let's do that real quick. And I have multiple windows and I want to change the, the height of all of them. It might be handy to have a component stud, short stud, underneath all my windows. So that if I want to change my window height, then I can change, you know, when I have multiple windows. A little too complex here. But I think you'll get the point. That those guys are now unique. Those guys are, are the same type of component, these two. Uh, when I select multiple items, I'm just shift clicking, uh, sh um, holding down shift and clicking. Um, anyway, so the short version is most things just leave them groups. For a few things like studs, rafters, things like that, make them components. When you copy a component, be careful because when you know, if you start making edits to one of those components, it might be affecting other instances of it uh, elsewhere in your model. And if you're not aware of those things, it's going to get really frustrating because you'll, you'll have parts of your model start to change on you without you expecting it to uh, because you've forgotten that you copied a component. Uh, so I would say always select group unless you're, you're darn sure you really want a, com a component and make a component. All right, uh, so in the next video, I'm going to continue uh, drawing this uh, little tiny house, and, uh, and, uh, and then I'll also break out and do these uh, small demos of the tools to explain how I'm using these things.